Oh, that was a great comic. Well done. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Time Travel Comic. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, before I begin this episode, I want to thank everyone that subscribed and watched the last video of Lunch and Comics number three, shot at Blondie's Diner with my good buddy, Captain Strangelife. Thank you for the support. I always enjoy bringing some older books that maybe we haven't seen in a long while. So that's what makes a time travel comic a lot of fun for me. Today, we're going to do a little something different. I'm going to show a spotlight on one comic book as we go through the pages, talk about the artist and the history that makes that comic book special. I'll be using, of course, my time machine to pick out that one special issue to review and explore. So come along, let's not dilly-dally any further. And we're going to activate our time machine with uh, this time token here from 1972. So let's uh, pop that right in to give us some time and to extract the book from time. And now we shall shine a spotlight on From Beyond the Unknown, a DC comic from April and March of 1972. And this is issue number 16. And right away we see a huge robot cover grabbing the airplanes from the sky, standing what appears to be Central Park right here. And uh, a lot of great action going on. I'm always drawn to these covers. I love the focus and the colors and the artwork and just the look of the robot. And as I bring the uh, artwork closer, you can see a uh, group of men manning the uh, computers and controls, what looks to be inside the cranium or the uh, top of the head in this glass dome uh, bubble. So a lot going on here and from Beyond the Unknown, issue number 16. And this is actually a reprint compilation of different uh, horror stories, science fiction stories wrapped into one, uh, borrowed from Mysteries in Space, Space Adventures, and some of the DC titles. So this cover is by Murphy Anderson, and he designed uh, the work here. And you could see in the, the column here, in the left-hand side, the titles of the stories that are within the book. So at least five short stories, The World Wrecker, and this here, The Man Who Discovered Earth, was in Mysteries in Space number 51. So again, a reprints from before, Doom from the Planet X, The 1,000-Year-Old Man, which is right there, the title, uh, refers to Strange Adventures number 15. So we have a lot of stranger, strange adventures and mysteries in space represented in this Bronze Age book. And I'm so glad that DC did this. Just a little bit of history about this particular series is that it was published from 1969 to 1973 with a span of 25 issues of just great artwork from Murphy Anderson, Carmine Infantino, uh, just a lot of DC greats uh, in there. So looking at this cover once again, I did some research. I want to say it's from Murphy Anderson, and it, it's a another rendition almost uh, 20 years later of this particular issue that's reprinted in this book right here. So just look at the differences between cover to cover. I'm going to overlap it a little bit. And I'm not going to say any words, but just let you enjoy and take in the work. The cover on the left right here is uh, Murphy Anderson. And I'm, I'm questioning whether it's on this issue right here from uh, 1972. So again, look at the comparison of the airplanes in the air. Right in front, uh, parachuters, one on this side, one on this side. So it's just a nice little tribute and reimagined cover, if you will, from the original Space Adventures right here. And just taking a look in this book here, this came out uh, back in November of 1954. I did a little mending tape. This uh, book came to me in really bad condition. I saw it at my local comic book store uh, not that long ago, maybe about a year ago, and just love it. I had to restore very brittle pages, 
and uh, we're we're greeted by that first page right here. And uh, I just like that artwork. I just love that robot, that giant robot, almost like a Japanese type robot going through space like Godzilla, which later became popular in the 80s. We're talking the 50s here. We're talking uh, back when it kind of all began. A key difference between the original and the reprint, they actually included the, the name of the artist, Carmine Infantino, who did the interior work. Um, so just thumping through, you can see the rendition of this robot, the earthlings coming at him with all they got, trying to slow him down, kind of a mayday situation. You can see here, originally published, Space Adventures here. I like how DC did that. They gave credit not only to the artist, but also the book that it came from. Oh, these are nice. The advertisements for some suspense stories and DC's best, The Unexpected. Again, these are from uh, the vault of DC, if you will, in their back collection, uh, reprinting into 52 pages. So... It's, it's so great. And this 25-issue series captures the best of those uh, science fiction and horror stories. So we could revisit. So just a fun book. I like picking these up because they're a cheaper alternative to those Silver Age uh, and Golden Age books that are much more expensive. Sid Green artwork. So it just gives us another helping, another dose, another glimpse of some of the great DC artwork. So I wanted to show a spotlight on this book and bring back uh, the the one that started it all, the original cover right here. Talk a little bit about Murphy Anderson. Uh, he had a 50-year career known for working with uh, Hawkman, for example, Batman, Zatanna, Spectre, even Superman. He first had his uh, debut actually with Fiction House and Planet Comics. And that is very fitting because Planet Comics was one of the earlier Golden Age books that introduced us to great science fiction stories, alien life. And, and it just kind of captivated me uh, looking at that. So working with Planet Comics, his first issue that he ever debuted, Murphy Anderson was issue number 48 of Wings Comic. And that was in August of 1944. So an interesting credit, too, for uh, Murphy Anderson. He had a hand in the uh, more acclaimed strange adventure, Adam Strange, who is the Red Rocket Man, who had a lot of the stories dedicated in the later run of Strange Adventure. Um, he also was a part of the cover with Strange Adventures number 12 from uh, 1951. So just a lot of work. Oh, also, uh, the Atomic Knights in Strange Adventure number 117. That was in the 60s. That's all Murphy Anderson. So just uh, a wonderful artist also to shine the spotlight on uh, as well. So in this brittle copy, just thumping through very carefully so I don't lose a page, is uh, that original art. I'm just kind of dodging all bullets, a huge alien robot coming in. The eyes are very fierce and set. It's it's just very Hollywood to me. The second story, Puzzle Planet, is right here. Another great one there. I want to say by Frank Jacola. But on these earlier Strange Adventures, the author's name was unknown and uh, pretty much kind of uh, in the dark for what we know. There's another rocket there. The advertisements. The captain really loves the advertisements. This is Tootsie Roll and Tootsie Pop. So that's great. Um, a little bit of science lesson, lesson, amazing ratios, and how we're going to look in about a trillion years AD from what people look like in 1954. Strange adventures. It's just so much fun. Cyberry artist here and the man who stopped the clock. So fitting for time travel comics. That's what we do here. Stopping the clock, putting it in rewind, sometimes rewinding or going into uh, the future. But I just love and enjoy these older books here. So 
just a little bit more of uh, strange adventures coming at you and just great so I, thanks again for watching the spotlight to do some more let me know in the comments if you'd like me to keep shining a spotlight and um, letting you know about these books right here in the image I uh, researched another uh, picture and it's by Jean Fawcett right here and it's from out of this world it's uh, issue number one of June of 1950 so maybe there was an influence there's a little bit of a resemblance here so that's really interesting to see if maybe uh, some of the artists like Murphy Anderson took away from uh, Jean Fawcett in this Avon publication so just comparing that is kind of uh, interesting to note thank you for watching and be well